it's for the new classic. What's up, Internet? My name is Victoria, and today we're going to be talking about Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. So, we all know Zenith was very hyped and very underwhelming, so with that rather mediocre follow-through, I was a little hesitant to try another really hyped book. After seeing this on all of the big booktuber channels and all of the main publishers that I follow and all over Instagram, I was a little skeptical about just buying a brand new hardcover without really knowing much about it, especially considering the crazy hype around it, but oh my gosh, am I ever glad I did. This book is absolutely phenomenal. This is going to be a non-spoiler review because I just want to recommend it to you and have you go read it and enjoy it for what it is without having me kind of get into all the plot details and ruin it for those of you that actually watch me to the end. Please watch me to the end. It is just so beautifully written and the characters are wonderful and I'm gonna get into all that but I cannot recommend this to you enough. <laughs> It definitely lives up to the hype. It is incredible. I gave it five out of five stars on Goodreads. Like, I just can't even express to you how amazing this book is. So for me, if I'm reading a good book, I'll just binge it right through. Like, I can't put it down. But for the first time in my life, like, this book was so good that I couldn't just read to the end. Like, I didn't want it to be over. So I deliberately only allowed myself to read, like, a couple of chapters a day because I was so desperate to have it go on forever. <laughs> Like honestly, I can't even think of one bad thing about this book. I know I said The Last Namsara was like the greatest book ever, and it totally is, except for I could say if I wanted to be critical that maybe it was a little bit predictable, okay. This was just, oh my word, like there's nothing bad that I can say about this. It's just beautiful. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> So if you haven't heard of this book, as I say a lot of the time when I'm reviewing popular books, where have you been for the last however many weeks? But just to outline it for those of you that may in fact have been hiding under a rock or lost in the wilderness somewhere, this book follows a character named Zelly in a fantasy world in which the ruling class have eradicated magic and are now persecuting all of the magic users. So Zelly comes from a family of, they're called diviners when they don't have their magic and then when they come of age they become magi. So she's from a family of magi. Her mother was a reaper which means control over the dead and the spirits and so she has that magic in her but with the eradication of magic she has not been able to practice. So basically at the beginning she goes to a market to sell fish and accidentally bumps into who turns out to be the runaway princess of the royal family and so together they go on an adventure to bring back magic to the land and to overthrow the oppressive government. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the world itself because while it is fantasy it is based on African culture and mythology so I don't know if it's just me that doesn't read enough, but I've never read a book influenced by African culture. Usually all the fantasy I come across is very much influenced by medieval Western culture. Occasionally I've read a bit of Indian and a bit of Middle Eastern, but for the most part it's Western. And so, again, maybe it's me and that's a flaw of mine and I need to look for more diverse books, but if it's not me, then I think the problem is that there aren't enough YA fantasy books out there that feature African culture. And so first of all, I just want to say that that was so refreshing. I was getting to the place where I felt like a lot of the fantasy books I was reading were just the same thing over and over. And so this was just so refreshing to come across because it was an unfamiliar world for me in many ways. But beyond just the cultural influence, it has all of the familiar elements of high fantasy that we love, with magic and kings and swords and all sorts of fun magical creatures, and it's just beautiful! <laughs> Beyond that, in terms of the writing itself, this world was so fully developed. I think sometimes with YA, world building is a little bit of a weakness and authors will just shove a sexy romance in our faces and get a bit lazy on the other aspects of the story, if we're being perfectly honest. But this was just amazing, like just so well done. Like detailed, but like without just info dumping, you could follow enough of what was going on and yet it was still like you had this whole picture of everything in the world and like different geographical locations and the history and the language and the creatures and how all the magic works and oh my gosh! It was it's just so good. <laughs> The characters also are just absolutely unbelievable. So there are four kind of main protagonists. There's Zelly, as I said. I really hope I'm gonna say these right. If I don't, I'm sorry. This is just how I read them in my head. So Zelly, our main character, and then her brother also features very strongly. His name is Zane, and he goes on the adventure with her as well. Then Amari, the runaway princess, as I said, and finally Inan, who is the main love interest for Zelly. He is Amari's older brother and the crown prince. So basically this is a story about siblings in many ways, and also friendship and love, but it features two pairs of 
of siblings, and I cannot say enough how wonderfully developed these characters were. Like, even the side characters had their own arcs, their own motivations and past and feelings, and they just felt so real. Like, Zelly is in many ways your kind of traditional YA protagonist, in terms of like, really badass, kind of headstrong, feisty, a strong warrior. Sometimes they can be really unrealistic and annoying, and they're just like, too badass or like, too hardcore and don't have anything else. Or they're like, Selena, and they're super badass, and then the author's like, here, but she also likes frilly dresses, so she's unique! And they often lack flaws, but Zelly's defining characteristics were also her flaws, which is what it should be. So yes, she's feisty and adventurous, but at the same time, she acts before she thinks a lot of the time and makes really stupid decisions. Then you have Amari, who is just a breath of fresh air for me. She's a very feminine, gentle girl, which I find is very lacking from YA, unless they're kind of treated as like, off to the side, or like, not really having that much impact on the plot, or someone for the main character to fight with or be jealous of. But this was just a beautiful representation of a very gentle feminine girl who still is able to kick ass when necessary, and they formed such a beautiful friendship, and it was just... <sighs> it was just so beautiful! <laughs> Then you have Zane. He was probably my least favorite of the main characters, but again, he was still very well developed, was very great as an older brother, you know, like loving, but also like, you should listen to me. <laughs> Not that my older brother's like that, usually I'm the one bossing him around. And then finally, Inan, who is the main love interest, and oh my gosh, he's just bae, like, oh, the feels. <laughs> I am a sucker for the morally ambiguous kind of a bad boy who really just wants someone to love him. And so yes, he was that trope. But interestingly, no, I can't tell you that because that's gonna spoil the plot. But like, there's some stuff that happens, so he's not like exactly the same, okay? You know, he just needs the girl to love him, but then does he though? But yeah, I was so in love with him from like page one. So I can't really tell you more without spoiling it. Basically, Amari, Zane, and Zelly are off on this adventure to bring magic back, and Inan is trying to hunt them down. So the drama is real! I don't know about you, but I just love it when my potential boyfriend stalks me and regularly tries to kill me. It's just so sexy. It's a real healthy basis for romance there. More than that, while this is an absolutely fantastic, exciting story, it's also an important story. I think a lot of times with dystopia, we get really great social commentaries because in order to have this futuristic world, you immediately have to think, how did humanity get here? What went wrong for us to get here? But in fantasy, sometimes the social commentary is kind of secondary. There's not a lot of theme or anything. It's just mostly like, here's a fun adventure and dragons! Which which I do love, but this deals beautifully with race relations and oppression. I can't pretend to understand the struggle that a lot of people of color go through, but this was just so impactful for me in a sense of like getting to understand the fear that people live with every day that I never have to think about. And so, yeah, there's this kind of ongoing message that like even when you're working towards improving lives for people, when you're not actually changing the structural foundation of a world that's built against a certain kind of people, then nothing will ever truly change. Like, it's not enough to just be like, look, now you have this right. You have to actually undo the foundations of a society that's created to oppress a certain group. And you know, like I know that in my head, you can talk about racism and oppression and know about it, but like Zelly's story made me feel it. I don't know what to say beyond that. I just thought it was so beautiful. Yeah, like an exciting story with wonderful characters who I cared about from page one, but also just so important and impactful. And I was sobbing like a little baby at Zelly's experiences that I will never have to go through. <laughs> And the last thing I want to say is just how beautiful the writing is. So, as I said, I was very skeptical about reading this after Zenith and was kind of like, oh, do I want to open this? Like, maybe I'll save it for later. I don't know if I want to read this right now. And then you know how sometimes in books there's like at the beginning, like a little snippet or a little blurb in the character's voice. It's not quite a prologue. It's just like a little section. So I'm going to read that to you because... So I open it up to this, right? And it starts off like kind of nice. And you're like, okay, this is all right. And then it just takes this really dark turn and like sucks you right in. And I was like, oh my God. Gosh, the feels! Feels from page one, guys, okay? It's real. Here we go. I try not to think of her, but when I do, I think of rice. When mama was around, the hut always smelled of jollof rice. See, isn't that nice? Oh, mommy and rice in the hut is so nice. I think about the way her dark skin glowed like the summer sun, the way her smile made Baba come alive, the way her white hair fuzzed and coiled, an untamed crown that breathed and thrived. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful and happy. I hear the myths she would tell me at night. Zane's laughter when they played Agbon in the park. Baba's cries as the shoulders wrapped a chain around her neck. Her screams as they dragged her into the dark. Her screams as they dragged her into the dark. What? Talking about screams? What? We were just talking about her hair and now what? The incantations spewed from her mouth like lava. The magic of death that led her astray. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I think about the way her corpse hung from that tree. What tree? What? She had pretty hair and stories and now she's dead? What? I think about the king who 
took her away. Who is this freaking king? Because he needs to die right now. So yeah, that's page one. That's not even the story. That's the little like intro to her memories or something. And it starts off all nice and then suddenly people are freaking dead and we need revenge and there are bad people and oh my word am I ever invested in this story. This is what we call good writing. <laughs> So yeah, Children of Blood and Bone. Beautiful title, beautiful story, beautiful writing, beautiful characters, beautiful plot. It's just so beautiful. Oh, Go and read this right now. If you're looking for something fresh and new and different and beautiful and important to make you cry and to make you fall in love with new characters, <sighs> this beautiful book is for you. Oh, this is definitely a favorite book of mine. Probably will be forever. There are songs coming about this. That's how good it was. So all I can say to you is go and read this immediately. It is absolutely 100% worth the hype. I cannot wait for the sequel. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you've read this book, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. And if you haven't, get on it right now! That's all! Bye!